Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Caught me by surprise. How could it do that when I hit go live? Hi, I'm Casey Durango of Go Key with Casey, where I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life like I did. Hope you're well. We are well. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your Saturday. And for those of you who observe Passover, Happy Passover week. And for those of you who observe Easter, happy Easter weekend. And for those of you who are just happy to see spring, maybe even if it's not showing up in your yard, showing up in your calendar, celebrate that. Today, I want to talk about a topic that was actually recommended in a comment under a YouTube video by Queenie in the house who happens to be here right now. She wrote, please do a video or a live stream about how you don't have to do all the organic stuff in order to be successful. I'm paraphrasing here. And I, I have long felt, and I've said it before, sadly, I feel like there is a bit of an elitist thread that winds through almost everything. I mean, you can find elitist backyard chicken keepers. And elitist, and I'm, when I say elitist, it's like, oh, if you only don't, do it top notch. And if you don't, you're somehow falling short of the mark. Elitist car owners or elitist, I don't know, essential oil burners. You can, but, but it's too important to kind of joke it off when it comes to nutrition and the onslaught of poor health that the Western world, and now the entire world seems to be, um, experiencing poor health due to poor nutrition. Let me tell you how, and all I can do is tell you how I learned the protocol and how, how I have practiced it low these many years, now eight and a half years. Keep your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams or fewer a day. Total carbs, not net. If it's not on page four, link below, don't eat it, but you don't even need a food list. Fatty sources of protein, limited amounts of non-starchy vegetables, and limited amounts of full-fat dairy. Those last two are not obligatory. They're just, if you're going to eat them, they're limited amounts. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Hardest part. Second hardest part, stop when you're satiated. Not stop when you're stuffed. There is nothing about many things that people spout. There's nothing about time of day eating. There's nothing about grams of anything other than carbohydrate. There is nothing about how those sources, fatty sources of protein should come to you. They don't have to be organic, grass-fed, locally sourced. Great if you can afford it and you prefer to do that. But to my knowledge, and I... I know people who know things. I'm friends with people who know things about this topic. There's no evidence that organic beef or whatever, as far as the nutrition, is any different than the kind of standard shelf. You know, if you go to a liquor store, they, you know, they call it about top shelf alcohol. It's the most expensive. Whether or not it's any better or not, it's the it's the most expensive. It's the one that's eye level. That's when you can buy. But there's, you know, think of organic as top shelf. Well, may or may not be better. If you want to do that because you feel good about it and you can afford it, great. But let's not send the message to people who who are, uh, you know, not everyone makes a lot of money. And to those people who say, well, if you're, you know, you must do organic. Grass-fed butter, you know, well, butter ma made from cream for grass-fed cows imported from 4,000 miles away. You must do that. You must do that. The, the implication is, <laughs> you know, you're not doing it right. Heck no. If, the, if what you can afford is ground beef from the Winn-Dixie or the Piggly Wiggly or the Publix or the whatever, stop and shop, there are all kinds of chains. If the best you can do is ground beef and some store brand butter. Now, do butter, not margarine. Fantastic. Do it. 
So unless the people who are saying you must do this, this, and this, and it must be organic and locally sourced, unless they're willing to pay your food bill, don't worry about it. And guess what? They're not willing to pay your food bill. They're not going to be writing you a check. They may be trying to sell you something. May or not. They may just philosophically feel a way about something. But a philosophical position is not a scientific or nutrition position. And there's nothing wrong with a philosophical position. By the way, can you guys see and hear me? I had to reboot twice for, for my camera to attach. Okay, so... You know, my husband and I, we are, we're okay. We are blessed. We don't buy organic beef. We get a big ribeye from Costco and my husband portions it. But then some days we eat liver, beef liver from Walmart. And it's like $2.89 for four servings. So, you know, it's like 80 cents a serving. Some days we eat literally high on the hog, and some days we're eating the the more economical cuts. And that's really what we need to be doing. So don't worry. If you're in a position where, oh my gosh, I really want to do this, but I can't afford all that stuff, don't worry about it. Some ground beef, some sausages, some store brand bacon, some eggs. And I think I saw someone that, you know, we do free range. If you can do that, great. We happen to do it because we have, well, right now we have 41 chickens in our backyard. 15 are laying chickens. The rest are juveniles. But they're free range and they're eating bugs and they fly around and they have a good time. But we can do that. But there have been times when we bought the five dozen eggs from Costco in the big box. Under under this same idea of, because there is an idea out there that following a low-carb ketogenic protocol is, the food is expensive. Well, it can be, depending on how you approach it. But also keep in mind, the food, the carby food, is cheap because it has no value. It has no value. <laughs> That's why it's cheap. But... Liver, chicken thighs with the bone and the skin, the dark meat, the cheaper cuts, very nutritious. If you can have ribeye every day, muzzle tough. If you need to make a, a taco bake, which is one of my, I made a video about this casserole that I made, which frankly I adapted from Linda's Low Carb, which is a website, old school, analog, really great. Kudos to Linda for doing this. Linda's Low Carb. And I just took it, the, 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 took the ingredients I had. People love this casserole. It's ground beef, some eggs, some cheese, and then a little bit of onion or jalapeno or seasonings. Very economical. Canned salmon. We make salmon cakes. Two or three cans of salmon, some crushed pork rinds, an egg or two. Uh, mix it all up, mush it. It's delicious. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You will end up eating less because the food is more nutritious. There is a, uh, Nina Teichholz linked to a, an article uh, on, I saw it on my Facebook group because I follow her. Um, a study that binge eating disorder possibly is when you're binging on junk food, it's because your body is telling you we're not getting any nutrition. If we're not going to get quality, we better have quantity, which is not good for our bodies. Go with the more nutrient dense food. And very often those are the less expensive choices. But the whole organic, locally sourced, do it if you can afford it, if you feel better about it. There's no doubt that chemical-free stuff is better and locally sourced is better. But guess what? If you're buying butter from Ireland, that's not locally sourced. 
unless you live in Ireland. You know, it's just not. If you're trying to reduce your carbon footprint, get butter from your local dairy. Oh, Casey's Pink Drink. Hashtag Casey's Pink Drink. Glass, full of ice. No sugar ginger ale. Splash of cran uh, diet cranberry, squeeze of lime. It used to be diet tonic water. I simply got out of the habit of getting the diet tonic water because it was the only thing I bought at the store, at this particular store. And so I said, I'm not going to make a trip over there just for diet tonic water, for crying out loud. So I switched over to non-sugar ginger ale, which I find refreshing. Now, uh, let me see how far we in are into this. I would love to hear your comments about this. If you can be successful and you can afford it and it makes you feel better, do it. I'm not telling people that organic, locally sourced is not good. I'm just saying it's not required. And let's not, and, and let's be really clear. There are portions of the population who need this protocol the most, who are, are in the, not in a position to spend that money on organic because it ends up being a high percentage of their income. Good news is you don't have to spend a high percentage of your income on, income on food if you buy good, nutrient-dense cuts of meat, pork, poultry, eggs, sausages, bacon, um, lamb, whatever you can get, but then start listening to your hunger. If you listen to your body, don't let an app tell you what to eat. Don't tet let a food plan tell you what to eat. And certainly don't let some schedule tell you what to eat. Don't eat if you're not hungry. If you're hungry, eat. Stop when you're satiated. Best trick I know for that is slow up. Slow up while you're eating. It allows leptin, the satiety hormone, to get to your brain. You end up eating less food, thereby needing to purchase less food. It's a wonder. So don't let, don't be put off. And, and do it if you can afford it. Don't worry if you can't. And, uh... There are, some, there are some snobs in every portion of the world on different topics. Wine snobs. And I, I use the word snob specifically because that is, you know, that's snobby. Oh, excuse me. You know, I get our, I went and picked out the pig at our local organic farmer. And I got the pig that I really liked the best. And then I ordered what I wanted. That's great. Not everyone can do that. And the pork chops from Costco suit me just fine. I particularly like the really thick ones. All right. I'm going to turn to, so there, if I, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be a reverse elitist. If you can afford it and you like it, do it. You know, in my life, I spend money on things that other people wouldn't bother spending money on because it I can afford it and I like it. Not much. I'm actually quite frugal. But that's okay. We all have those things. I have two coach handbags. I never had that before. That was I wouldn't have spent the money on myself because I didn't feel good about myself. But I like a good handbag. Not a big deal. But... People who don't have coach handbags, that's okay too. All right, so there we go. I'm going to turn my attention to the comments. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. I will give a nod to, I know that there are some patrons here. So um, Shameless Commerce Division with a nod to the Car Talk guys. Uh, you do not have to buy one thing to be 100% successful at this. Certainly not supplements or powders or kits or anything like that. Just lay off the carbs. But I'll sell you a mug and a book and a magnet 
every day. Oh, and a t-shirt. I'm wearing, this is my Go Keto with Casey Racerback. You can see a link, I hope, under this video at my Teespring shop. And for reference, this is a size small. Unbelievable. But water, steel water bottle, Go Keto with Casey. And this is the message. This is the message I really believe in. A mug. Lay off the carbs. Lay off the excuses. That's the key. And then my mug on the back of the mug. And things like I never knew that I needed. Like a pop socket for the back of my phone. But spiral 12-month record book. See it at my blog. A magnet. These are almost gone. Are you here out of hunger or out of habit? If hunger is not the problem, food is not the solution. At my blog as well. Okay, enough of that. And thank you to patrons. I have a private. Hey, look who's back. United Arab, Arab Emirates. Um, BIF video. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. Beautiful photography. Okay. Um, patrons. Private uh, support group at my Patreon page, link below. Depending on your pledge level, I do 20 pre-recorded videos a month in first thing in the morning, and I never know what's going to happen. But this, usually the topic suggestions are made by the patrons. Going up from there, a handful of patron-only live streams on Crowdcast every month. Going up from there, a handful of patron-only video group sessions on Zoom every month. And going up from there, one-on-one -on -one with me a month. There. Commercial over. Okay. I'm just going to jump in where I am seeing people. Polly Wedge. Good morning, Casey and everyone. Happy Easter. Suzanne Sick. And I'm sorry. I'm going to put my glasses on because I, I like to pronounce people's names correctly. Sucaranza. Andrea L., thanks. I haven't had anything tested hormone-wise, but I I dove into Dr. Mindy and, okay, that went by me. I'm not sure what we're talking about. Queenie in the house. Why, why does you know who say seven cups of salad? I'd be bloated. That is not a thing, okay? There is a personality who's making a boatload of money. I'll, I'll just, just be blunt. Telling things... Okay, seven cups of vegetables minimum is not it. It's the opposite. Two cups of leafy greens a day maximum, and they're not even required. And this personality also says, or used to say, I don't know if they still do, that the ketogenic protocol can create fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. False. It's the cure for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But this person says it so they can sell you some pills to address non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But really, all you need to do is lay off the carbs. And it's not seven. No. No. Wrong. Just wrong. It's just that that's a sales site. That's a sales site. Okay. Fozia, uh, Ahmad. Okay, let me see if I can scroll back up. There was a question. Question, on keto for six weeks, is sleep disturbance normal? Okay, uh, Fazia, thank you for the question. Some people do re report that their sleep changes. Now, how, why would this be? It might be that you actually have more energy. You stop burning glucose for fuel, which is kind of a bleh. It kind of, you know, there are spikes and drops in energy. And... You know, so you're kind of exhausted during the day, or you take need a nap during the middle of the day, or you have sleep apnea when you are eating carbs and your but you start to lose weight and fat is per coursing into your system. I find that my sleep is more restorative. Um, one reason, undoubtedly, is because there is less mass on me. <laughs> I I never needed a um, CPAP machine, but I think that was in my uh, my future. Hold oh, please. My producer is showing me something from Molly Brown, who started uh, keto two months ago for health, not to lose weight, but I, but I don't feel great like others. Is this normal? And do, do the sodium flu drink prior? I ate mostly fruit and vegetables and meat. Was that the one? Thank you, my producer, aka my lovely mate. Um, because the questions come by pretty quickly, and I don't see them. Okay, so to feel better, but you're not feeling great. So you've been doing it for a while. Now, the keto sodium flu, or now whatever it's being called, can be a thing. And it's, you don't need to 
you don't need to buy a whole bunch of products. If, let me tell you why you might feel a little lethargic. When you stop consuming the carbs and the body, the liver is not pushing out glucose for fuel. Glucose is sugar. Then all these things happen in our body and we start to flush water. Our kidneys just process more water and we lose water. With the water can go sodium, the queen of the electrolytes. And sodium plumps up the blood, which is why people with sodium-sensitive hypertension, high blood pressure, are told to reduce their sodium. But that's not everybody. That's people with sodium-sensitive hypertension. So sodium plumps up the blood. Conversely, when sodium is washed out, the blood volume can kind of go down, which kind of can leave you feeling a little shaky, a little fatigue, maybe a headache. Easy solution for that. You can do something really yummy like a bouillon cube. Yeah, bouillon, like cheap bouillon, high in sodium. One cube, I, you know, my husband has almost every day I make egg drop soup. I have a recipe for that. But the bouillon, nor bouillon cube, it's about 1.1 grams of sodium. And then I put other stuff in it. That pumps up the sodium that can help. If you have sodium-sensitive hypertension, obviously, this is not the trick for you. But some people report they just put some salt under their tongue and drink a swig of water. Some people really love something called um, sole water. Take Himalayan salt, put it in a jar with water. Use a plastic lid, not a glass one. The water absorbs 27.5% or something like that by volume of the sodium. Drink it, put a couple of teaspoons in your drink. So, you know, there are a lot of reasons that that might be the situation. I'm sorry you're not getting the, you know, feeling that bolt. But anyway, sleep, getting back to sleep. I sleep better because I don't have the mass and I didn't have a CPAP machine. My lovely mate had always been, most of our marriage, needing about five hours of sleep a night. And as he got in his 50s, it was more like seven or eight, which was not like him. He goes, he follows this protocol, not for weight or anything, but just because he saw the changes in me and it's the, the health benefits. He's back to needing like five hours of sleep a night. So it may not be that it's a problem. It's just now, you know, you're finding what it really should be. Be great. Um, and again, I'm just jumping in. And from West Kansas, food lot land, but I it didn't used to be in my childhood. Judy Tucker, we are 80 miles from north northwest of QC. QC? I don't know what that is. Suzanne Sigoranza. Pickle juice for sodium is my fave. A lot of people love that. A swig literally of pickle juice. It can help with muscle cramps and everything else. Some people, and this is for muscle cramps as opposed to like fatigue, uh, yellow mustard. They keep little packets of yellow mustard by their bedside table. They get a nighttime cramp, they eat the mustard, gone. Sharon Wilde writes, Bullion is good for stopping the feeling of being hungry for me. And Leslie writes, I put salt in my black coffee. I'm starting to really like it. That was an old thing. People used to put eggshells in there as well. It can cut the better, bitter. Um, Suzanne Sigaran says, sometimes I think I am hungry. I just need a little sodium. Pickle juice helps me a lot. This is what we have to learn, what actual hunger feels like. Many of us, it's been, we don't know. Many of us maybe have never been hungry. Since we were infants, we were, you know, nursing babies tend to, you don't nurse until the baby starts to cry. But if you're bottle fed, and I'm not slamming that, you're, we're told, okay, two ounces every four hours or one and a half ounces every two hours. So you make sure the baby has it because we were told that's what a baby needs. But many of us have been fed and overfed our entire lives. Our entire lives. Finish everything on your plate. Even if we weren't the ones that served the food on the plate, somebody else decided on the portion size and then we're told to finish it. Our parents weren't trying to be mean. They were doing what they were told. So, yes, learning what hunger is. It's an art. Stephanie Lynn, I use magnesium tablets and use uh, elements some days. Always salt to taste. Leg cramps at night stop. Yay. Food is my pharmacy, writes Andrea L. Uh, B. Gray, never heard from, of muscle 
uh, mustard for muscle cramps. We'll try. Actually, I, I have to dig. I say it every week and the, or every time this topic comes up. There were two Harvard doctors or professors who were out fishing. And somehow they came across this mustard thing and then they did a study on it. I'm going to have to dig it up. Suzanne Siguranza, amen. I was brought up where the only love shown in my family was food. Everything revolved around meals. And that's the way most of us are. But, you know, my calendar for the month of February, the, the thing above the, cat, the grid reads, you know, food is not love. Love is love. Food is fuel. It's also not sport and it's not entertainment. It's fuel. But we have to, we have to figure that out for ourselves. So um, I'm going to, for the next couple of minutes, if you guys, I think there was a story at the very beginning. I glanced in when I was logging in. Kim Hoover wrote, I told you about my daughter a while ago. She hit her goal weight, 245 pounds to 170, size 20 to a size nine. Now that is a double, double success story, right? When, when someone you love takes up the mantle and, and makes it work, I just, gosh, so great. And I'm sure, Kim, that you influenced your daughter. You may, you may have saved her decades of unhappiness or feeling n not great about herself and future poor health. Kudos to both of you. Um, Sue W. writes, food is my fair is not therapy. It's not therapy. We don't use food to cope. We use food to not cope. By definition, you're just kicking the issue down the road. I won't go into my story about, you know, life came at me and all this stuff. Because huh? I'm just like everybody else. I'm no, I'm no special snowflake. I'm just like everybody else. So I've had the same excuses that I made for myself. I called them explanations, but they were excuses. Gail um, Truss writes, I crave fried eggs. How many eggs is too many? I have no idea. They are unlimited. Do you, can I tell you something? I had six eggs yesterday. I love my, now I've got, I go through permutations the way I like eggs. Now it's fried eggs. So I have two slices of thick bacon. And I take some of the reserved bacon fat and I put it in the thing and I make my eggs and they're sunny side up and I like runny yolks and then I eat them. And then later in the day, I got a little peckish. So I had two boiled eggs, hard cooked eggs that I had already cooked. And actually I got a can of tuna. There was about a couple of ounces of a third of the can left. I put that in there. Pop, 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 pop. And um, some petite baby dill pickles and I ate that. And then last night, I made a different plate of fuel for my husband. Friday is generally salmon night. And I thought, I'm going to have a couple more fried eggs and bacon. I didn't want salmon. I, but then I thought, I don't want to go to all that trouble. So I ate two more boiled eggs. I ate, six, I ate half a dozen eggs yesterday. They're great. Don't worry about it. Andrea L. writes, whenever I think I'm hungry, I ask myself, am I hungry or bored? I tell myself food is fuel, not entertainment. Another thing on the Go Keto with Casey calendar is use the blast method for deciding whether to eat or not. Don't decide to eat if you're blast, bored, lonely, angry, stressed, or tired. That's when we make poor decisions. It's like the halt thing on 12-step uh, programs. If anyone has any non-scale victories, scale victories, anything else they want to share, I find these very inspiring. Mommy does keto. Good morning. Judy Tucker, great. Suzanne, Kim Hoover, thank you, Casey. And Christy Kali Chica, never liked eggs before keto. Love them now. Go figure. Andrea L., one year on keto for a year, started 240 pounds in size 1820. And now I'm 166, a size 1012, feeling better about myself. And I'm off all 
meds. Poster child for why to do this. Feeling better about yourself. Okay, let's do it in order. Coming off all meds, feeling better about yourself, and losing weight and wearing cuter clothes. Let's just face it. There is just not that many cute clothes, no matter how hard they try and size, you know, 20. I start in 24 W's and 2X size tops. And now I, the last, like size six um, trousers and petite smalls and leggings. And this is a small. It, it's just, you know, I feel so much better. Uh, Stephanie Lynn was able to do my fitness dance video for a full hour yesterday and feel great. I'm 64. That's a victory. Desiree Galloway, I only eat when I'm hungry now. And the weight magically started coming off. It, it, people think it's magical, but you eat less food. We eat too much food as a rule. We've been eating too much food all of our lives. Even if it didn't show up, either health or scale wise until years later it's it this is why these are chronic diseases type 2 diabetes high blood pressure inflammation they're chronic because they build 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 until they hit the tipping point so i'm going to start to wrap up i've been trying to keep these live streams short and i really appreciate you allowing me to be part of your day um Okay, Kim, I have been keto and low carb for five years. I'm 58 and I've been in a size six since, since. Love this lifestyle. It's just amazing to the point where you actually find it hard to re realize how big you were before. I did a video about I, how I, when I was bigger, I couldn't imagine being smaller. And now I'm smaller. I cannot imagine how I went through my days. All right, guys. Make it a good one. Be sweet. Be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total, not net. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. Buy the best food you can buy. And if that is not what everyone else is buying, that's okay too. Get healthy. All right. Thank you so much. God willing in the creek, don't rise. I will see you next time. Bye.